young Sigmar Heldenhammer, prince of the Unberrigan tribe and saviour of Astofen, had won the first of many great victories in a heroic fashion, and a once dangerous horde of marauding greenskins was now nothing but ashen corpses. But there were far greater deeds to be done, and many more adventures to be embarked upon before Sigmar could create his empire and take his place as the greatest human ever to exist. Welcome to the Wizards and Warriors channel. Join us on this epic journey as we follow the ancient history of Warhammer's fantasy world, Sigmar's blistering ascent to prominence, and how he united the empire. Soon you'll get the chance to play the countless campaigns of the Warhammer universe yourself in the upcoming game Total War Warhammer 3, the sponsor of this video, releasing February 17th. This final part of the Total War Warhammer trilogy brings unprecedented strategic scale featuring four new factions of Chaos, Khorne, Nurgle, Slanesh and Sinch, and for the first time players Kislev and Cathay, adding to previous rosters to create the largest selection of legendary heroes, gargantuan monsters, flying creatures and magical powers the series has ever seen. Total War's signature combination of turn-based grand strategy and action-packed real-time battles brings the world of Warhammer to life. It offers a huge single-player campaign with iconic Warhammer races, units and characters, and now lets you play together with synchronous co-op for up to 8 players, and if you're new to the franchise, there's now a specially made beginner's prologue to teach you the game. Pre-order the game or purchase in the first week after February 17th to get the Ogre Kingdom's race pack as an early adopter bonus. Will you conquer your demons or command them? In the aftermath of the triumph near Astofen in minus 15 IC, the Unberrigan civilization appeared to be on an upward track. Agricultural production was at a surplus, freeing the craftsmen to weave great tapestries, create lavish jewelry, and train their apprentices in these and a dozen other trades. Unberrigan forgers learned dwarven secrets in the crafting of fearsome new iron equipment, industry boomed, and warriors were sent to aid the allied Endel tribe of King Marbad. But there were also cracks in the armour. The brother of dead Trinovantes, a young swordsman known as Gereon, accused the prince of leading his sibling to death at Astofen. Moreover, he bristled that his sister Ravenna loved such a man and secretly formed a pact with the malevolent powers of chaos in the hope of getting revenge. But for several years yet, the pattern of regular life continued. Beastmen incursions were repelled, new warriors trained, and slowly but surely, the foundations for Sigmar's envisioned empire were laid. The course of history began to accelerate, when in minus nine IC, a deluge of desperate Cherison refugees descended upon Reichdorf from the north. With them came emissaries from their king, Aloysius, and Kruger of the neighboring Teleuton tribe, bringing dire tidings. 6,000 demon-worshipping Norsi warriors had landed in wolf ships, cutting through all in their path. The envoys offered their monarchs sacred sword oaths to King Bjorn if he marched to war with them. Realizing the Chaos Marauders would come for his people next if he allowed his brother kings to fall, Bjorn accepted the plan, ordering Sigmar to remain behind while he went north with 3,000 men. Sigmar, although dissatisfied at being appointed to serve as regent in his father's stead, proved competent in the realm of administration. The young of his tribe began to receive education in history, geography and other fields, while a rotating farming system was instituted to give the people more time for other pursuits. However, the viper was ready to strike and when Sigmar took his love Ravenna to a beautiful spot along the River Reich, Geryon attacked. In the struggle, Ravenna was killed and Sigmar mortally wounded, sent floating down the river. In the north, Bjorn and the other monarchs attacked the Norsi army, with the Umberigan king slaying a red-armoured Chaos warlord at the direction of a witch, Grainy, but suffering mortal wounds in return. In order to save Sigmar, who was on the very brink of death, Bjorn's spirit and that of his son ventured together in the purgatory of the Grey Vaults, where they fought the terrible demons of chaos for the fate of mankind. At the end of this ethereal clash, King Bjorn died, and Sigmar woke in the company of his companions, 
his physical form having been found in the river by a fisherman. In minus six IC, the Unberrigan army returned to Reichdorf in a mourning triumph. A feast was held to honor the fall of Bjorn and the coronation of Sigmar, attended by rulers of tribes from far and wide. Among their number was the trident-wielding warrior queen of the Asabons, Freya, Krugar of the Talutans, Marbad of the Endels, Aloysius of the Cherusans, and Kurgan Ironbeard of Karazek Karak. It was at this raucous meeting that King Sigmar first proclaimed his dream of empire. Once Bjorn's tomb was sealed, the new Unberrigan ruler ordered a muster for the following year. Then, after the spring thaw of minus six IC, Sigmar led 3,000 warriors to launch a punitive expedition against the Norsi. En route, he called upon the sword oaths received from the northern kings and joined their forces with his own. Then the kings rose to the lands of the Udasis, where they rescued a beleaguered King Wulfilla of Udasis from the northern raiders. The Norsi were crushed in battle and then deviously permitted to retreat to the coast where their ships were incinerated when they attempted to sail away. With the campaign a success and Wulfilla now his firm ally, Sigmar bid farewell to his allies and marched south. Going via an alternate route by skirting the northern edge of the Middle Mountains, the Unberrigan king came to the mountaintop fastness of perhaps the most stubborn of his brother kings, Archer of the Teutagans. This king's power was in the ascendancy, just as Sigmar's was, and he had chosen to use that newfound power to ravage Unberrigan lands, particularly the settlement of Ubersreich, while declining to aid against the common Norsi foe. Sigmar decided it was time to knock Artur down a peg or two. The Teutagan monarch had grown arrogant atop his fortress pinnacle, the formidable Fauschlag Rock, and refused to come down to treat with the Umberrigan encamped outside his walls. Sigmar, delivering on a threat he had issued, personally climbed the sheer cliff face and crags before slaying Artur in single combat. By right of conquest, Sigmar thus claimed kingship over the Teutagans. Sigmar then went home again, arriving in the summer of minus 5 AC. There was barely time to rest before he leapt into action again. When summer cooled into autumn, Sigmar assembled a tribute caravan of the highest quality warhorses, weaponry, and armor his people could produce. Bringing a small force along with him, the king marched into Azabon territory and delivered his gift to the flame-hearted warrior queen Freya. In return for such boons and for a night of passion with the Unberrigan king, the Asabon charioteers of the Eastern Plains became firm allies with Sigmar's people. The year after that, Sigmar joined battle with an army of recalcitrant Thuringian berserkers under their bellicose king, Otwin. Amid the fearsome clash, the ultimate outcome of which was never in doubt thanks to Unberrigan military prowess, Sigmar bested Otwin in single combat, just as he had bested Artur. The defeated Thuringian surrendered with the words, You have a heart of stone, King Sigmar but by the gods you are a warrior to walk the road to Ulrich's hall with. With Otwin's sword oath now his, Sigmar returned home with the intent of resting a while. It was not to be. The same witch who had indirectly saved Sigmar through Bjorn now appeared to Sigmar directly. She warned the king of struggles to come, that followers of the Chaos Gods were provoking the Greenskins into a war that would be unequaled in its scale. It would be a war to eliminate everything Sigmar hoped to build before it could be. The only hope was for the unity of mankind, and for that to happen, Sigmar had to venture southeast by himself to the faraway lands of the mercantile Burgundians. Sigmar, now in his late twenties, arrived at the Burgundian capital of Sigurdheim after weeks of travel and presented himself before the appropriately named King Sigurd. The ascendant warrior chieftain put forward his idea of unity and common cause against the evils of the world. Wily and always in the market for profit, Sigurd requested Sigmar's aid to rid his kingdom of a truly ancient evil, a monstrous dragon ogre, Skaranarak, 
a colossus of the primordial world. If the Unberrigan king succeeded, all the better. If he didn't, that was the removal of a possible rival. But when Sigmar ventured into the mountains and confronted Skaranarak, he smote the malicious creation with Galmaraz and put an end to its evil forever, fulfilling his part of the oath. Sigmar's reward was yet another step towards the unification he so desperately desired for the race of man. Not only did Sigurd offer his sword oath in thanks, but so did the rulers of the two tribes over which he held suzerainty, Marcus of the Menegoths and Henroth of the Merigans. By the time the Unberrigan king reached Reichdorf, now a city rather than a mere town, in late Midas III IC, the Greenskins were already on the march. Ostergoth lands of King Adelhard in the northeast were being laid waste, while the Merigans and Menegoths were besieged in their great holdfasts by orc armies, who rampaged across the southeast with impunity. Realizing that Greiner's foretelling had been true, Sigmar raised forces from his brother kings and launched a campaign in the east. At last, in minus two IC, he confronted a great greenskin host at the Battle of the River Ava, halting its brutal advance at the cost of 10,000 warriors. That was just the beginning. In our next episode, we will see how the war against the Orcs and the Battle of Blackfire Pass unfolded, so make sure you have subscribed and pressed the bell button. Please consider liking and sharing, this goes a long way to help us in the eyes of the almighty algorithm. We'll try to read and respond to every comment, as we want to see what you think about this video and which videos you hope to see in the future. Your feedback is very important to us. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel, and we'll catch you on the next one.